Hi, Larry Berman here, and here's what's on my radar this week. Uh, a week ago, of course, we, we had no radar because Rogers' network was down, and, and from my home here, Rog, Rogers is our quarterback. Uh, in the office, we, we have redundancies with Bell and hard wires, and, and not it's not all wireless. But it, it just speaks to how fragile the, uh, the world is as we rely on technology for our day-to-day -day and, um, um, you know, communicating and, and doing business. I just picked up this uh, raw, this uh, Samsung Fold. So this is one of these new $2,000 phones. I haven't got a new cell phone in, in about five years. So it was time to get on the 5G grid for me. I'm looking at it all week and nothing says 5G, like it's not even, on, it's on 4G. Anyways, so, you know, what, what are we looking at this week? Well, let, let's have a look at our screens and I'll bring them up here and, um, We'll, we'll get a sense of, of where some of the risks are and opportunities are. As always, um, you'll come to know that I I focus on the S&P 500 being the biggest benchmark in the world. So, you know, having a look at the charts this week and the key data points that, that have come out in terms of the inflation data, uh, all we'll know by now, the CPI and PPI were very, very hot everyone from washington to wall street who has an opinion has opined on it but as we you know, zoom in here and have a look at the last couple of days you know what you ended up seeing on these two days with cpi and ppi were downward openings and by the close higher than the opening again bad ppi down opening flush out of the lows, running some stops, higher close. That is bullish behavior on what should be very bearish data. And today, when we look at the economic data and the price, very, very strong moves here. We got some bank earnings that were, were uh, a misses here. Actually, if we look at earnings today and what came out, we've got a couple financials from BlackRock, PNC Bank, um, New York Bank, Mellon, uh, Wells Fargo, U.S. Bank Corp, and Citi. And when you look at and State Street as a custodian bank, who beat and who? Where did they beat? Really, it doesn't seem like what's gone on in the sector so far during earnings is systemic. I.e., it's every bank. It's it's some are executing better than others, and I think that's a very important lens. A pause on the share buybacks. Usually the market doesn't like that, but again, for the most part, we got a very positive response. Here's what really changed the marketplace today. The retail sales numbers came in and, and it, you know, hotter than expected. Revisions from last month were generally a little bit higher in the control group. So this is you know, X auto, X gas, uh, X, uh, what was the other thing they put into that? Anyways, doesn't matter. It's not all that important. Um, revised lower, but this was month was higher. But these are nominal numbers. When you take inflation's impact into these and you net that out, what is clear is sales volumes are down. What is clear from hearing from the banks and Jamie Dimon and those folks, consumers are digging into their revolving credit to keep their lifestyles going here. And, you know, is that good or is that bad? And that that part can obviously be debated. But when it came to the 10 o'clock number today, nobody's ever really cared about University of Michigan consumer sentiment. It was a second or third tier kind of piece of information. There's a lot of, uh, of good data points when you dig into the meat of the reports, but the market never historically responded to the headlines. It's not until recently when some of the Fed heads started talking about sentiment at readings around inflation expectations. You know, six months ago, nobody cared about you mish inflation expectation numbers. Why? Because you know, back for the last 40 years, nobody cared about inflation because it was generally falling and well-contained. And now we care. 
And so short-term inflation expectations took a notch down from expectations and longer-term inflation expectations took a notch down. Markets love that because the Fed will need to be less aggressive. So as we get into the July 27th Fed meeting and Jackson Hole in August, what the Fed does here, I think they don't go with 100. So if they go with 100, there's a definite pause. If they go 75, it leaves it open for a 50 in September. I think they have more flexibility and that's the way the Fed ends up going is 7550 as opposed to 100 and a pause. It could be 100 and a 50, wouldn't take that off the table. But they're all data dependent. And the more this type of data, inflation type data cools off, the less the Fed's going to have to do, the lower the terminal rate, the better the markets will like it. But ultimately, inflation is going to be, uh, you know, pretty sticky here. So that could mean more rocky markets down the road. But, you know, looking at, um, you know, where we look for bull and bear picks of the week. So on the bear side of things, the U.S. dollar index, the flight to safety, you've got to go back to the um you know, not you know, financial crisis. Where did the dollar index go? Flight to safety. Where did it go? The dot-com bubble bursting. The dollar index is somewhere in the middle of that range and actually up towards the higher end. So are we going into this kind of a downturn economically? Almost certainly not in terms of the bubble bursting. Um, and so to me, the next big trade for the dollar is not the continued parade of everybody falling over themselves saying the euro's going to 90 or 95 or British pounds going to parity. That right now is the narrative and almost consensus across the board. So when we blow this up, we say, where's the next move on the dollar index? And I would argue back to towards 100 here uh, on where we were, you know, only only really months ago. and. You know, we were below that before the war broke out in Europe. So I, I think as as the war comes to an end in Europe and and that whole European risk and emerging market risk from strong dollars um, uh, uh, subsides a little bit, you got to be bearish U.S. dollar. And what's been sold off the most with that huge run up in, in the U.S. dollar, you guessed it, gold, silver, my bull pick of the week. Back up the truck here, folks. This looks like an exciting trade, especially if the Fed has to raise rates a lot less than the market has pricing in. Have a good week, everyone.